Paul just remembered he had a special assignment today, uh, earlier today. So I said, you go do that special assignment. We don't need you. I didn't say it like that. That was very mean. But, uh, yeah, so it's just me and Kelly. Like the old days when we first started, it was just me and Kelly talking about hockey. Follow Kelly at, well, I guess Obey Puck Show since not really active on Twitter. Follow me at Dan 3 on all social media platforms. Uh, so <laughs> I, I was going to avoid most of the Flyers discussion, but something occurred to me last night watching the Lightning pounce and trounce and just beat the holy hell out of the New York Islanders. And it's that I don't think this team is as close to a Stanley Cup contention as we thought it was. We, we, everybody was saying it. It's not just me, like, put over the team. At the end of the – during the pause, everybody was talking about that one of the hottest teams, if not the hottest team in the league, was the Flyers. Uh, and then when the pause – when the, the phase is to reopen – the NHL started up again. They handled that round robin beautifully. Uh, I, I don't know. Is that just a cop out? Are they still good, Kelly? What, what's what's what? What, did, what have you observed after watching the Flyers get bounced? Even though it was a seven game series, they didn't show up for that seventh game. Only one player showed up, and his name was Carter Hart. Um, and then watching the first round of the Islanders and the Lightning. Am I? Am I? Should I be panicking yet? <laughs> no, I don't think so. This is a, it's such a weird playoffs. Um, it, it was bound to be kind of bizarre. Um, mm. And it definitely has been. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> but I don't, I don't think uh, the Flyers losing a seven game series to probably the team playing the best consistently in the east um for the for the whole length of this this thing um is anything to be uh, ashamed of um that islanders team was playing a system and they played their system oh, so every game and it's it is it's really it's really hard to 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 crack it especially if they score early and they've they've definitely had the scoring touch that's always kind of been their their Achilles heel has always been the fact that they they just like they really struggle to score goals and they just kind of got on a roll, especially their top line, and they were putting pucks in the net, you know, five minutes into a game. And for them, that is the best scenario. They get they get a lead ahead, even a one goal lead with that team, and then they just lock it down and you have to play for another, you know, fifty minutes of just slogging tough hockey. And most teams don't want to <laughs> just don't want to do it. I mean, as we saw with Florida, and as we definitely saw with the Caps, they just were not interested in putting in that much effort uh, to try to break through. The Flyers it, fought back. I was going to say you pointed out that Trotz even said in one of the press conferences. I think it might have actually been after Game Six when you know they came back down. They were down three one, and they tied the series up at Game Six. That he said that the only team that's pushed back against them. Were the Flyers, the Caps, and the uh, – well, hell, I forgot who else. It was. Panthers. Panthers, that's it. Yeah, wow. Seems like a year ago now, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that the Panthers and the Caps did not push back, where the Flyers did push back. Right. Yeah, I, I, and I think that's something you, you take as a positive. Um, the Flyers are definitely a mostly young team. I mean, it, it's a, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good split. You've got you've got a pretty good group of, of veterans there, um, but then you've got a lot of the a lot of the guys from the Phantoms and stuff who who finally got their shot. And and I'm I'm thinking of guys like Lawton and Konechny. And in my head, those guys are Phantoms. I know they're not, but in my head, they are. They're mean? they're young, they're young players. Um, you know, Patrick wasn't there because of an injury, but you know, so. I think they have a good balance there, and you know, you, you've got your goaltender, Philly. Don't screw it up. You know, let him learn. He definitely learned some lessons in this playoffs. He had bad games, and he bounced back really well. He was the most consistent player for the team, which is a great sign for a young, uh, a young goaltender, especially in this weird situation. So I think there's a lot of positives to take out of it. It's the first year in a long time where 
I so hey, Dax, hockey is fun. Hey, if all those things you wanted to ask about the Flyers, you want to ask them now. That's the segment we're on. Um, I plan on doing another Flyers podcast episode with uh, Sean soon. I just don't know when that is because our schedule is not aligning. So, but anyway, Dax is here with us, Kelly. Um, or is it Thanos today? I actually haven't been on Twitter much, so I'm not sure. So forgive me, sir. So um, this one thing I did see where usually there's a lot more people being vocal stupidly in the hockey community. <laughs> We're talking about that now, Dax. Uh, there was very few who said anything negative about Carter Hart, but there were a few, and they were immediately silenced by a lot of people saying, just to shut the F up. <laughs> He's there, there's always going to be that kind of silliness, but <laughs> to, to the majority of people who, um, you know, watch a lot of hockey, who've watched a lot of NHL hockey, what, the, you can't be mad at Carter Hart for mm -hmm. that performance. Nope. Maybe, uh, you know, you can look at saves here and there, but overall, there's no way you can be upset with that performance in, in such a, like I said, in a bizarre situation, in the pressure cooker that is the playoffs, he did great. Let me ask you a question. And I asked you this of the, uh, Dax, I'll read that in a second, sir. Uh, I asked you this of the Capitals as well. And so I'm going to ask you of it now. What do you do in the off season? Off season? F off season. On the off season. In the off season, I have no idea. Because um, the bear, it's barely an off season. Like I, I, I think the turnaround is going to be much quicker than anybody realized. But there is, oh, I, I'm probably overreacting because I'm so damn angry in general. But at this point, or do you look at the the weird year and go, well, it was a weird year. Weird year. It's okay. You can't really shake it up too much. But I said something that I'm going to stick to, and I'm not. Let me preface this by saying I don't want to trade Claude Giroux. Never, never want to. But at this point, Carter Hart's the only one that you don't ever touch ever at this point. Um, as a fan myself, you can retort and uh, rebuttal in a second. As a fan myself, uh, loyalty's not getting me anywhere. Uh, I don't care who's on the team. I would like them to win the championship. I don't care who does it at this point. If that means certain players that I've mentioned before are gone, I'm at this point, oh, well. Um, am I reaching? Uh, no, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. You've been a loyal fan for a long time, and it's, it's tough. It's tough to see you your know. team. Your team has been a, is a contender most years, which is – that's a, I mean, it's a it's a blessing and a curse at the same time, right? Like and your team's yes. competitive. They're in the they're in the playoffs and they're legitimate. You know, they've got legitimate shots. Most, you know, maybe every other time they're whatever. And then it's just it's just crushing when when they don't make it through and win. But it, <laughs> I I know. <laughs> yeah, I was saying. You know. uh, I I certainly know as a Caps fan, um, and not just the OV years. Um, I I'd say we were more like the Flyers in you know from kind of the late 80s into the into the late 90s they were that they were always in the playoffs and once in a while you're like well maybe this is the year they'll kind of sneak through and then you know if they just get their shot then it just never happened um i'm not sure in my mind it's really hard to build a team around Hold on, Dax. Year. so around around carter you mean you're around a yeah, at all? It's, it's really hard um, I, I, the only one I can ever think of would be the Jersey Devils and we, you know, <laughs> um, you, you can do it, but that, that's, those are going to be some rough regular seasons to, to sit through, <laughs> especially for, uh, for ticket holders. Um, yeah. you know, it's really, it's really hard to find. People, uh, players who can put up points, especially in the NHL, especially consistently. Um, and Drew has has done that. Uh, he's getting on in it. He's getting on in his. Um, <laughs> we wasted all of his. Well, how long has how long has Drew been there? How long has he been in the uh, NHL full time? Nine ten. 
nine ten. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, so yeah, I mean, you know, the Preston stare. What <laughs> it took Ov thirteen years, so he's still got time. <laughs> I mean, he's not Ov. <laughs> okay, like I love no, Drew, he's, but calm the hell no, down. He's, not you. I mean, in general. he's definitely he's he's in the 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 Crosby type player. He's he's a playmaker who could score, but oh. he's he's definitely more about making the play, making the pass, um, and face offs. He's so good in the face off. That um, watching that team since we've been together, I've watched the Flyers just as much as I've I've watched the Caps and seeing him game after game. He's so impressive. Um, I, I I was definitely rooting for him this year. I would have loved to have seen a, a run for him and for the team um, and for the fans in Philly and everything. Didn't happen, though. All right. So Dax in the chat said, uh, I had a lot of positives I did see. You guys were touching on the younger guys already. This was the first or second playoffs for most of them. First for Phil, second for um, Sanheim, TK, and Provy. Regardless how it ended, it was needed for them. Uh, Carter Hart as well. Uh, goalie tandem was outstanding too. Moose and Carter, well, enough said. Moose had a soft goalie let in but played very well versus the Isles and narrowly missed a shutout on, on Washington. Carter, well, enough said. Let's, uh, let's be on it. All the positives. You and I already discussed Jake and JVR in our last NHL 20 stream. Do you agree with me on that? That JVR needs to go. I'm sorry, there might be something on the back end that I'm missing about this guy. I don't see why he's taking up ice time at this point. I love JVR. I love what he did in his first stint with the team. I hated seeing him go in the first place. But I think just about there, there might be a handful of guys I'd have to relook because I lost track of where the roster stands after the pandemic. It, you know, everything after everything locked down, uh, I there might be two or three people that can do just as well as him on the Flyers at this point. They're sitting on the Phantoms, or that you trade for. Excuse me, Jake. I don't know the curious case of Jake Voracek. It's not the same Jake. Either. None of these guys are the same anymore. Again, I don't want to get. I I'd like to keep most of this team together, but. I I worry that Chuck Fletcher will jump the gun on something and and trade somebody he should. I don't know. It's so weird to try to talk about this at a normal level when the season. What is it start in December? Supposedly uh, n- November, December, depending on how things wrap up in the in the playoffs. We have Myers, Carter, Sam Hyang, and Patty, and a whole ton of other. Well, there's the other. Okay, so let's talk about Nolan Patrick. Uh, I want to go on record again and saying anybody who is making light or taking or not taking his condition seriously, ram your head yourself. Ram your head first into a fence until you can't see with your eyes open and tell me how easy that is to deal with, let alone every single day of your life. You have no idea what it's like to deal. I don't either. On a very basic level, I get stress headaches. Even if I'm in a good mood, it just happens, and I'm out. It's like not even close to a migraine. Can you imagine trying to play hockey, trying to sit up in, in bed with the headaches he's having? If you're making light or thinking light of Nolan Patrick and what he's going through, stop watching hockey or – I, I hope you don't have to deal with the head trauma he's dealing with. That's a very big question, Mark. He may never play again. We have to, unless there was a progress that I missed, that I didn't know about, that he is not having headaches as frequently as he was, you have to, that's 50-50. You have to discuss the possibility he might not play again. Not in today's NHL. The head stuff... Well, apparently uh, it's uh, pick and choose on the head stuff because we saw a couple, Kelly, <laughs> where it was like, he's back. <laughs> That's definitely concussion protocol. Now nah, he's back. So I don't know about Nolan Patrick. Um, I think you can, as Dax is alluding to, Kelly, in the chat, that you can offload a cup. Uh, you offload one of them uh, during the expansion draft. <laughs> there you go. 
Yeah, I mean, that's something else to consider coming into the season. If As if this off off season won't be weird enough, you've also got to think ahead to uh, the expansion draft and, and who you're not going to protect. Yeah, it's just going to be weird. I think they just announced when the draft and free agency will be as well, which is very early in October. Well, we'll talk about that another day because I don't feel like looking it up. Yeah, the Nolan Patrick thing is uh, flip a coin, see what happens. Um. I gotta be honest with you. Now, the more I think about it, I don't care who they trade. It's it's more. I love these guys. Again, preface that I don't care who you trade at this point. As long as it's not Carter Hart. If you feel like you got a move that you put somebody together with somebody else, I, J, uh, JVR is the only one I'm like, yes, please take, get him out of here. Jake, again, flip the coin. He he wows us one game and. Confuses and baffles us. The next, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so anyway, the lightning and oh, go ahead, Kel. No, I was just gonna say, I, I don't know if um, I don't know if you can apply consistency in the same way um, for an offensive player that you do for a defensive player, right? right? Cause like a def a defenseman can be, have a great game and put up three goals and have four hits and, and block 10 shots. Um, and it's an amazing game. And then the next game, he might not do anything that shows up on any score sheet anywhere, but he still had a good game uh, with, you know, your, your forwards and centers, if they're not putting up points is like, well, uh, you know, What's what's the deal? He scored five points on Saturday, and then he had two more games that he did absolutely nothing. And why is he so inconsistent? It, I, it's it's not the it's like not the same. If I want to deal with the raw emotion of it all and end it on this, here's my problem: you were down three one against the boring. It might as well be the '90s New Jersey Devils Islanders. But, but what? Oh, the game's on. And it didn't make me mad again until I saw game one with the Lightning and the Islanders. Now, me comparing the uh, Lightning and the Flyers is probably silly, but my again, you're down 3-1, you fight back, and you didn't score one goal on Grice? <laughs> In game seven, Grice! Yeah. Still a little mad about that. Don't know if you can tell. Uh, I understand. You, uh, have to, you have to give me credit on a personal front that I didn't talk about it very much until we got on the show. This is very true. Because I true. knew, because I knew you'd get tired of it before we got on the show. I understand. I uh, trust. Me. I I understand the frustration of your team not showing up in Game Sevens. Holy, at home. What was, as was the it? top seed? I understand. Trust Dax, me. I understand. Dax, Dax, check me. I think was it eighteen shots in an, an hour? I think maybe it was twenty. No, you don't. You don't come back three one and then do that. If you want to lose three to two, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, it's embarrassing. Uh, what else from the Stanley Cup do you want to talk about, Kel? Oh, I just I did look it up real quick. Uh, the draft will be held October sixth and seventh, and free agency begins on October 9th. Has has the NHL released any preliminary ideas past the eight city idea for the next season? Do they think this is going off? Like. I haven't seen anything. I, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it now. Whatever. Um, <laughs> anything else on the Stanley Cup? Um, I, I was going to – my one thought uh, about game one for the East final was <clears throat> you've got – that was probably the, the, first, um, the first time in these playoffs – where there was a team that actually truly had rest uh, playing a team that just went through a, a seven game series, three of which went to overtime. That's true. Uh, so, you know, with one day off. So I, you know, while I think Tampa will probably roll over the Islanders, um, I know they'll respond. Um, Trots will definitely uh, motivate that team and they'll have a better showing. But I think that some of that definitely could have just been fatigue from a very tough series against the Flyers. That was a physical series, a lot of back and forth, um, and, like, you know, with the three overtimes. So um, I expect them to rebound in game two, and, and we'll see um, if they're going to make a series out of that. If, if they don't, that's going to be really quick, I think. 
I tell um, you what, the West Series uh, surprised the hell. I really thought Vegas was going to walk all over Dallas that first game. It was the other way around. <laughs> yeah, um, I I was well, I was surprised that the the stars were there. I think Vegas was definitely one of the one of the favorites out out west. Um, but um, kind of thinking thinking about it afterwards um, and seeing some of the the footage, it, it kind of looks like what the Caps did to the Golden Knights. Um, if you remember the the Caps Cup run, the Knights were un freaking stoppable. I think they lost two games leading into the final. I mean, it was ridiculous. They were just rolling, um, and they got into they got into that series, and all of a sudden, the Caps were hitting everything that moved, and they were playing that trot system. The modified trot system is a little mm-hmm. different when you have some guy no, named Ovechkin on on a line yeah. um, than <laughs> than the Islanders. But like, it's the it's the same system. A little different. Yeah. Um, and they they definitely they they broke through it in game one. Um, but then after that, the Caps just just kind of demolished that team that had been just rolling right along. So that that was kind of the vibe I got from uh, what the Stars did to them. I guess we'll see in game two because Reeves is back. And it's for me, it's a series of two of the absolute worst players, in my opinion. So you've got Reeves <laughs> for Vegas and Corey Perry for the Stars. I'm hoping somehow they just take each other out and everybody else can just get on with playing hockey. That would be kind of nice. You know, those old school fans are going to be mad at you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ryan Reeves. Uh, uh uh, I don't know. I, I I don't. Whatever. That hit was really crappy. That got him suspended, and he probably deserved the one game suspension. I do think Ryan Reeves is well loved by that team and that community. Not not think I know, and I do p- think he's part of that heart, if not the whole heart of that team. So uh, if he's smart, not and I'm not saying he's not smart. That's not how I meant it. If he plays a smart game. And he's smart about it. He will be on the ice for the rest of this, this this playoffs because that's a lot of attitude and power right there. And also, when Ryan Reeves on the ice, whether you like him or not, Kel, you're 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 less inclined to f with somebody when he's on the ice or playing the game in general. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but I understand the hate, Corey Perry too. All I have to point to is the Winter Classic this year, and that pretty much sums up Corey Perry. My opinion, of Corey Perry. Uh, that that beautiful moment. I can't even remember what game it was against Vancouver, though. That P- Perry had one of those just boneheaded penalties. He took a penalty that truly just hurt his team for no reason whatsoever. It was a bad. Might have been. They might have been up, or t- I don't even remember. But <clears throat> excuse me. I just remember they they called the penalty and they switched over to um, Dallas's coach and his his absolute frustration and bewilderment. He just threw his hands up. And was just like, what the, what the f is this? Why is this guy doing this to me? And I just, my heart like grew three sizes that day. I was just yeah, like, I hear you. I, I feel your pain, man. <laughs> I can only imagine what it's like to have to coach him game after game. <laughs> like, don't do that. <laughs> Dax just said one thing. I will say about Dallas. Dobby has been outstanding. He has really been. He's been the under the under the radar uh, gold It's like that we call him Dobby. <laughs> Yeah, he's got it on the mask. Um, he's, oh, he does. That's right. Yeah, he's he has he's been absolutely fantastic. Um, and Dallas knows how vital he is because that game where Ben Bishop was in net. Oh hey, god! Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, that was not good. So yeah, that um, I've noticed they've been even more protective of Dobby um, as they should be uh, since then. Uh, he's also an unrestricted free agent too. What a contract year from! Oh my God, I didn't even think of that. My God, how old is he now? Dax, I'll let you look that up. You're our unofficial producer today. Um, you know what I can't believe is I can't believe that Vancouver's out of this. Yeah, they uh, I they definitely became my my team uh, that I was was pulling for as I was watching stuff. Um, oh my goodness, uh, Markstrom was absolutely playing fantastically, uh, and the fact that, uh, the Demko came in and just, like, it, and made people forget Markstrom, how great Markstrom yeah. had been, just, is just a comment on how amazing 
uh, Thatcher Demko was. Um, but for me, I haven't seen very many Canucks games. For me, um, I got to discover the joy that is watching uh, Pedersen play hockey. Yeah. That kid is amazing. He's like, he, you, he looks like he could be blown off the ice by like a stiff wind. He's so small and <laughs> slight, but he is so talented. He's got, you know, he's, he's just got, he's got that vision, that hockey sense or whatever it is you, you, you call it. And he's, he just moves around. He can dance around these guys and, and makes them, makes you forget that there are other NHL players out there with them. It's, it's amazing. Um, I think you had two things you wanted to discuss, unless I remember the one. I know what the last one should be, but I know you mentioned two. Th- what was the two things you wanted to talk about? In Africa? Um, well, I the KHL uh, is underway. They kind of got the start to their regular season. Um, was was it this past weekend, or I think it was the weekend before? I think it was the last weekend before, yeah. Yeah, the last weekend before. Um, so so that's underway. Lots of, not lots of, a, a couple of familiar names over there. Um, I think there's two new teams in the league. Um, I, I do I do try to catch the, the highlights of that league. Uh, I love, I just love watching hockey on the international um, bigger ice surface. I think it's just even more fun. So. I like seeing guys with more room to round, around them get faster speed. And by the way, Kadubin is uh, 34. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he was a younger younger goaltender or an older goaltender. Um, so, yeah, I was just, just kind of checking in on that. They're, they're at the most, the teams played three games. So it, there's nothing really to tell so far. Did they... Uh, did they start in the playoffs, or were they just starting their seasons back up? No, this is the this is they canceled last season. They ended so last they season restarted the, the next season. Yeah, this is this is their um their twenty twenty one season. Gotcha, cool. So yeah, they they got all the teams playing uh, right yep. now. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad they were able to figure it out. And I hope it works out. Let's just say I, we've discussed a hundred times the COVID and and all the stuffs going around with the pandemic. We love hockey. We want to see hockey, but we want to see everybody happy uh, and safe. So I'm thr- if anybody can get going again without risking lives or health, go for it. Do it by all means. And I, more hockey for me is more entertainment. So I hope most of the leagues can figure out what to do by the end of the year when it's colder and all the other leagues can start back up again, hopefully safely. Safely? Safely. Safely. <laughs> Safely. Great. I don't know. Marsham leaves in free agency. No way they don't make Demko the starter. Interesting. Do you think they'll try to keep Marsham? Or is he out? Dax, I'll wait for your answer later. Uh, also, uh, ten on a, I don't want to end on a down note, but... Well, we can talk. There's something else we can talk about, but I did want to mention the... Okay, we'll mention that first, then the last thing. <laughs> Yeah, I just, um, speaking of the KHL, I did want to mention that uh, yesterday, uh, September 7th, was actually the ninth anniversary of the uh, locomotive team plane crash uh, that killed a majority of the team, staff, coaches. Um, so that was that was not celebrated, but remembered um, as part of the beginning of the new season. Do you believe that somebody survived that? No, there was one survivor in that accident. I no, not seeing seeing the aftermath. Absolutely yeah. not. It's a miracle. Yeah, believe it or not, one I can't see. Uh, according to eyewitnesses, Galimov and Sizov were severely burned, but conscious, being rescued. Both Galimov and I'm saying I'm going to say Sizov. That's probably wrong, and I pro- apologize on his pronunciation. Transported to Moscow for treatment to replace an medically induced comas to relieve stress. However, Galimov died on the 12th at the Institute of Surgery. Sizov was moved to intensive care ward on the 12th of September, and his life was consi- to be considered out of danger. He was discharged from the hospital on the 28th of October. Somebody actually survived that. It's oh, amazing. It was ter- It hit us. I say us. It hit the Flyers fans hit the NHL in general because they named people new in the NHL, unfortunately. Well, there was a few. There was, um, is it, how you pronounce, Demetra, Demitra, was a three-time NHL All-Star. 
Oh, Pavel Dimitrov? Yes, thank yes. you. I, uh, mm -hmm. He was in that accident. And uh, Brad McCr McCrimmon, who was, a, who was their head coach at the time of the crash, right. he was on the Flyers. He was an NHL stalwart. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he, he's a name. People knew. Uh, Several-time All-Star. He was on the Flames when they won the Stanley Cup. He was a name. He uh, also, unfortunately, passed away in that accident. And it still gets talked about uh, as if it's fresh, you know, because uh, nine years is not a long time. And while this year has trudged along, it's felt like seven years in one year or more. Uh, when the anniversary came up, it was like it just happened. It's Yeah. You still feel the effects of it to this day. And hard to move on from that. But Absolutely. The team, but the team was, you know, still active. Yeah, the, fa the fact that the, the team um, did come back um, and the, they, they play currently is just a testament to that community and the team and the, and the staff, the people who, who weren't on the plane, who were able to get it going again. Uh, Dax has responded. Uh, he thinks Markstrom's out, uh, to quote him. I don't see the Canucks paying Markstrom a ton of money when they have other holes to fill with all the good backups in the league. They'll extend Demko. Wow, it's crazy to me. Demko was good, but it's crazy to me that they wouldn't pay Mar Okay. Demko, is, Demko has been the heir apparent for Vancouver for a long time. They drafted this kid, and they were pretty sure what they've had. They've had him in Utica and he's been playing. He's been the man in Utica. And, you know, and I, this season, I believe, was the first time he'd been, like, the full-time backup. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. Again, I, I don't follow Vancouver that closely. But he's, like, no they've been that. waiting for this. And I, I think that was his coming out party. He's, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to take this. Give me, give me the team and let me be the goaltender. Well, there you go, Dax. We have two people signing off on that. Uh, so what was the last thing you wanted to mention oh, on this uh, old school version of Obey the Puck? I was just going to mention that um, they have announced some awards for the um, NHL. Mm. They announced... This one, this one touched a sore spot for me, but not in the way you think. Go ahead. Uh, well, today they announced that Bobby Ryan won the Masterton Trophy for Perseverance. Mm -hmm. um, he battled uh, alcohol abuse issues. And did come back this season to um, to play again before before the season uh, was halted. Uh, I know Lindblom was one of the other nominees there, and I for, I forget the third person who was the finalist for that award. Um, to be honest, I forgot because I thought it was going to be uh, Lindblom. <laughs> yeah, I, the, that's one of those awards. Like, I mean, they they pick one person, but it's you know all of the guys. Uh, they all made it, which is which is really good. That's a good thing to celebrate. I, I ha, uh, Canucks and Capitals have similar. We'll talk about that in a second. Dax, we'll go back to you at the end. Um, I saw, not naming names because it was a lot of names, and I don't hold any ill will towards you. I'm not talking trash. I'm just bringing this up as a subject. Saw a lot of Flyers Twitter that was going even as so far as to insult Bobby Ryan when it was announced that he won the, that won the award. Um, and it's hard to, we both had experiences, multiple experiences of cancer in our family, closer, some closer, some not. The battle is why I'll explain Dex. Uh, the battle is immeasurable. I you can't. I don't know what it takes to have a battle like that internally in your own body to just I'm not going to go into it. It's terrible. I don't think people understand nor care what an addiction is like. And that's nothing to shake a stick at. You could have flipped a coin and gave it to either one of these gentlemen. You agree with that, Kelly? Oh, absolutely. It's embarrassing to me as a Flyers fan that anybody would even think about saying an unkind word about Bobby Ryan because you thought cancer was a more valiant victory 
than al- than addiction or alcohol abuse. We could argue that till we're blue in the face. It's a silly thing to fight over. It's so friggin' stupid. Oscar Lindblom is probably going to get, what's the award Robin Williams got for the Grammy, just to compare it to something frivolous? Like he got, not the Grammy, he got the Academy Award, but he should have gotten it. It was a makeup award. Oh, for Goodwill Hunting. You and I both agree that was a makeup award for the movie he should have gotten it for, which was Fisher King. Right? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, Oscar Lindblom is probably, uh, Dax, I was going to bring that up, probably a shoe in next year. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the team nominates the player each year, so. So, with all of the BS that's happened this year, just on a basic level with coronavirus, that anybody, and it was a lot, so thankfully nobody I know personally, or Twitter personally, there's the air quotes, that I was like, what the, do you have, <laughs> but there was enough people I saw getting like uh, it was bad you can't take that away from him how dare you how dare you okay I just had to get that off my chest that really bothered me that that was even a discussion like Lindbaum cared <laughs> right like I speak cancer I don't care I just played hockey again I'm gonna go home thank you very much yeah yeah <laughs> There's, there's nothing like those kind of, those kind of fights um, to put everything in perspective. Yeah, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Uh, Kelly, uh, if 2020 has taught me anything, it's that uh, Twitter is overrated by about a thousand percent, and I don't care. Just scrolled by it. I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> the one discussion I got into, I, it just it went over. But I was like, all right, I'm good. It's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a well-deserved win. Again, you could have flipped the coin and gave it to anybody. Um, those two gentlemen, I mean. Uh, as far as going to backtrack for a second, or was there more about the uh, awards? Oh, yeah. Um, there have been two other award winners in name. Uh, Matt, Matt Dumba won uh, the yes. King Clancy Trophy. Yes, yes. Um, and that's for leadership and humanitarian work, which well-deserved, and especially in uh, the world today and what's been going on. He's definitely been one of the leading voices. Well, Kelly, athletes only care about money, I was told. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> By many people. Whatever By many people. And uh, that's why you just ignore those people and <laughs> move on with your life. It's a much easier way to live. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, the third award uh, that's uh, award winner that's been announced. Um, this is for the Willie O'Ree Community Hero Award, um, and I'm, I apologize if I say this name wrong. Is Dampy Brar? Uh, he was a professional hockey player. He played in the IHL and the West Coast Hockey League. Ooh. Um And he, along uh, with his partner, they um, developed a program that support provides support to South Asian and other ethnic players. Um, And he also worked with Haley Wickenheiser um, to bring the first women's ice team from India to Canada for a tournament and play. So he's been doing outreach um, in his communities um, to bring hockey to more people. I just went to the website to check and they haven't even updated yet because they only have 18 and uh, 19 (laughs) award winner. And I can't find information on this year. Uh, NHL never change. Ever change. Dampy Brar at uh, Brar. Yeah, I, I I think you maybe Dampy. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's it's D A M P Y. Yeah, yeah. B R A R is his last name. Badass name. Yeah, but I I just thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, I I think I think we'll see a lot more of this, especially in the uh, community and leadership and outreach. I th- I think these kind of uh, people involved with trying to grow the game, really grow the game. Like, yes, bring to bring it to new people. That's how you grow the game. Bring it to people who never even seen a hockey game or even consider playing hockey before. That's how you grow the game. Why and would you want to grow the game, Kelly? It's great to see that. Uh, yes, and uh, definitely completely in line with Mr. Willie O'Ree. 
Yeah, I don't think people understand uh, a lot about Willie O'Ree and uh, even stuff that I missed. That documentary that aired right when the pandemic lockdown started. We turned on the NHL Network and that Willie O'Ree documentary, which was very well done. Right. That I think was produced two years ago. Yeah, I think so. Um, but there, the the things you know and the things you don't are vast <laughs> about Mr. Willie O'Ree. Uh, and, and just to just to extend what I was saying earlier about Matt Dumba and, and the other protests, um, things were – decisions were made for the sit-out for all these leagues. Uh, I don't know what changes you were expecting if you – I see a lot of people make the comment, like, well, racism ended, so they're back to, to sports. It's not the point. There were changes that were made. It might not be the changes you thought or that you wanted or even cared about, but demands were met during those sit-outs. Every step counts. We're all on this earth together. You might as well get along and try to live in it together instead of, instead of fighting each other. Just my two cents. This little white boy from uh, South Jersey. Uh <laughs> Uh, I want to go back on the Twitter thing, and Dax said, um, when I said Twitter was a waste of time, not entirely, he says. I wouldn't have met you, Brianna, Key, and a whole ton of other people without it. Well, that's true, but there's Twitter friends and then Twitter noise. And what I've occurred to me is I really am tired about the third-party opinion about uh, Bill Joe Bob Smith in East Ingleberry, Kentucky, telling me what he thinks. <laughs> about Black Lives Matter or the band Genesis or anything else that I like. I'm sticking to the friends is my point. And the next step is getting off like Kelly. <laughs> She's getting off it completely. And I do appreciate you and your support and everybody's support. I have built a small, very tiny, it's getting larger every day. Got a bunch of new subscribers yesterday playing the end of Avengers, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, with Twitter and Twitch. I'm very grateful for that. And yes, uh, Real Mama Eagle, Brianna, you, and everybody else I've met through here, give or take one or two, uh, has has helped me through the pandemic. So thank you very much. And Kelly, too. <laughs> eh. Thanks, Kel. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, you want to cover anything else before the end of this episode? I think we got yeah, it all. I think that was it. It was pretty uh, brief. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you for doing the episode today because both of us were kind of like, it's Tuesday, I don't care. And then Paul told me he wouldn't be able to make it tonight. And the reason I started this podcast was because of you. And I think what you have to say is smarter and more intelligible than a lot of people that have hockey podcasts in general. And I wanted your voice to get out there, so I'm glad you did this with me today, like the old times. I'm now going to ignore you and play Fortnite the rest of the night. Kelly? <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Come in here, we'll watch hockey. Um, Kelly, I guess you're, do you want it? What do you want? Do you want people to follow you or just follow the Obey the Puck page? Yeah, just Obey the Puck. If I, if I got something to say in that format, that would be where I, I do, but Otherwise, I don't particularly care. And you're a better person for it. Obey Puck Show. Um, hey, uh, Obey Puck Show on Twitter. Obey the Puck on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at DanLow83. Dax, as far as the Phillies, if they split against the lowly web, so web Sox, Red Sox, I got to go. I can't talk anymore. I got to the end of the episode and I can't speak. Follow me on Twitter at DanLow83. All social media platforms, actually, DanLow83. Go to vocnation.com to listen to the all the podcasts or on your smartphone. Go to your podcast app, whatever smartphone you have. Type in VOC Nation, Radio Night Network. Damn it, I almost got through it. Please follow those accounts. If you want to watch us live, twitch.tv slash danlaw83 or watch us later, youtube.com slash danlaw83. For Kelly Levy, I'm the above average comedian, Dan Calachico. Thank you very much, Dax, for joining us in the chat and everybody else that was watching. We'll see you in two weeks.